everybody. Welcome to Playbook by Laser Force Loveland. This podcast is a platform for laser tag players to geek out about strategies, stories, and ongoings in the Laser Force scene, and for you to join us as another player at the table. My codename is Mischief. I'm a player from Loveland, Colorado, who loves to talk tag. And tonight, I'm joined by none other Odin's fist. than... Then what? What was that? Odin's Fist. Odin's Sorry, I'll keep it tame for the listeners. Fist. No, don't keep it tame. Are you kidding? I was just about to say, this is... We are joined by world champion ammo carrier, Odin's Fist, for our 10 tips for how to play the ammo carrier position. Welcome, Odin. Oh, thank you. Wait, we're doing ammo today? Oh, man, all my tips are for how to play Cleric in D&D. Oh. Shoot. Well, you can just well, make these up off top of your head. Yeah, we'll uh, swing it. Odin, tell us a little about the premise of ammo. Because if I'm honest with you, oh, yeah. here's the secret. This is the position that I am least comfortable playing, and I've been playing Space Marines 5 for 12 years I get the general premise of ammo, but this is the class that I feel has the highest untapped potential. And uh, could you just give us a general overview? Yeah, so um, I feel like kind of a misconception that a lot of people have going into the role is that um, they they kind of relate mm-hmm. it to the medic, except um, like a lot of people kind of see it as like a medic that can, that's able to shoot across the field more because you can get your lives back and you have infinite shots. But um, there's so much more to the role, right? And, and so I think like uh, kind of like an overarching premise for it is it, so, so you are a resupply. Your number one priority is still resupplying your team with shots, which is very important because without mm-hmm. shots, your team can't do stuff. And it's a lot easier for I've you heard. to give your team shots to do stuff with than for you to do five players worth of shooting. Uh, and so, yeah, checks out. Resupplying shots very important, um, but beyond that, you, you have so much functionality in the game, right? Um, <laughs> it, based on the like uh, the importance and the efficiency of doubles, uh, you are a companion role to the medic because you do want to be resupplying people together as much as possible in order to like cut down on their resupplying time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also you have the ability to resupply people in three hits in order to reset their shields and so you're kind of this cool little companion role for the whole team where you fit into this cool support niche where you aren't the medic where you have this limited life pool you have the ability to do more and be have more of a presence in the arena but but you still are like by and large a support player Mm. okay that's a cool way to put it you're a support player i think that can help clarify some of the extremes that we see because a lot of people think you just shove the ammo in the corner with your medic and treat them like a medic which you say don't do and other people take it the other way and they're out on the front lines with the commander thinking well i'm not i'm not a medic i can get my lives back and i have unlimited shots i'm basically like a scout plus i should be fighting more than the scouts but yeah. there's a there's a there's a balance here is what I'm kind of kind of hearing. Absolutely. But um, we're gonna get into that. Definitely what? Definitely a lot of nuance to the role. So yeah, I'm ready to get into it. Oh, Excited. let's get into it. <laughs> so I went ahead and I put my five tips before Odin put their five tips. I took some of the low hanging fruit. That way, Odin can give you the audience some of the best, most creative tips from their world champion brain that you could possibly get. So my tip number one, let's keep it simple. Give your team shots. And the reason I'm putting this is because we just did a 10 tips about the medic role. And the reality is that even though you're not the medic, you are a resupply. So there's a couple tips that basically count for both the medic and the ammo. And I thought I would just reiterate them off the bat as my first tip. In the medic video, we talked about learning to priority double, which is when if you're the medic and somebody needs needs lives and not shots, you basically tag them without consulting the ammo before anything could possibly go wrong. Or if they need shots but not lives, you wait till you see the ammo fire before even possibly thinking about tagging that player for lives. That way they don't get the thing they don't need. 
Uh, it works in reverse for ammo, obviously. If somebody needs lives, don't shoot them unless you see the medic's shot go off. Because even if you miss your double, you know, you're trying to both attack at the same time. If you miss your double, it's better that they got lives and not shots than the other way around. It's just an insurance policy. Learn to priority double by, by you know, just making sure whatever resupply goes through first actually gets through. And uh, what well, do you have anything to say about that real quick before I also talk about boosts? Oh, yeah. Um, I think an important thing on this is being very careful not to cross up on doubles um, because it, it, it can cause a lot of chaos. And, and what I mean by this is uh, a lot of times it happens in, in areas with high IR bleed. So when you're resupplying in tight cubbies and you have players on you, um, but it can happen just due to like a mess up and, and, and tagging the wrong person. And so so being very clear in your communication about who you're resupplying mm -hmm. and then making sure that you're not accidentally putting the medic down or resupplying somebody else uh, and, and cleaning up that resupply angle is, is very important. Uh, and, and I feel like for the most part, this is kind of the ammo's responsibility because uh, lives are just so much more important. And usually the medic needs to be tucked down in a corner somewhere, wherever is the safest. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's usually just a matter of, of moving your gun to a better angle. And sometimes, but sometimes, you know, you might even need to go move yourself to a different angle in order to get a, a decent shot off where you aren't just bleeding all over the place. Uh, because what, when you put people down who need lives on accident in these crossovers, it, it just messes up the whole rotation. You got people who are getting lives, but not shots. You got people who are getting shots, but not lives. Nobody's getting everything they need. And uh, it just causes chaos. So, so on the giving your team shots, and, and especially on the priority doubles, uh, make sure that your doubles are, are clean. Don't be just uh, hectically tagging people like willy nilly. Like, make sure you're putting thought into like the way that you're angling your gun and making sure that you're pointing specifically at the person that you're trying to resupply. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep, that was well said. Um, the premise of giving your team shots, it's also just something good to keep in mind throughout the whole game. Like if someone's low or critical on lives, they're they're gonna die out of the game, but being low or critical on shots is I mean almost just as bad because it means you're soon not going you might as well be dead. You know, you might as well you're just walk a walking reset without shots, and those players are just gonna follow you around, basically begging you for shots. They become walking resets. So uh in, in essence both are equally important, and you need to remember your responsibility as a resupply to be giving your team those shots. And uh, the second way to give your team shots, apart from giving them, you know, a direct, a direct shot resupply, is to boost. If the ammo carrier gets 15 special points, five from a base, one per tag, they will get a shot boost where they can hold down the special button. Everybody who's active at that time gets a resupply of shots, um, which by the way is 5 for a commander or heavy, and a 10 for a scout, uh, 5 for a medic too, but you know, medics, medics don't use their shots very often. Um, no, they definitely can, that's kind of a joke. Um, boosting, boosting principles, <laughs> um, we had mentioned like 5 or 6 different ways to boost, um, I suppose the one where the enemy is nuking isn't quite as relevant because people aren't supposedly about to die right at that moment. Um, the main way that I would boost is either one, seven seconds after your own team's nuke goes off. That way everybody should be active on your team and you can basically get bang for your buck. All five players on your team should get shots. Um, Odin mentioned one in the last pod about... If you hear that your team just won a major fight, most of your active players should be up and giving them a shot boost can potentially help them carry on the momentum of that one fight for a little longer before coming back for resupplies. And the final way that I would use it is specifically on the commander, I think. If a commander has come back and they're trying to fill up, as long as you make sure the commander's up, you boost and then you shoot them. And that commander just got 10 shots in an instant rather than 5, and they can get bad out in the action quicker. Uh, commander feels like the one class that really, they have a huge tank of shots, and they fill up really slowly, and they have lots of reasons to use all those shots. You could say the same for the heavy, maybe, but yeah, that's, that's how I would 
prioritize boosting as the ammo. Aiden, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I, I think kind of the big ones are, are if if your team has good control of the momentum of the game, then boosting off of your commander's nukes, uh, like you said, it is very effective. Um, probably the most common way that I use my boost in game is uh, boosting and then resupplying the commander in order to get them back out in the action faster. Um, because a, a lot of the game just becomes determined by commander presence. And mm -hmm. so when both commanders go back for resupply, getting your commander out eight seconds faster to claim territory that they want in the field or to be able to pressure the enemy resupply is, is very valuable, especially mm -hmm. when you're talking about, like, you know, the difference between, you know, three resupplies or two resupplies. I, I mean, it's a big deal. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, when you hear your team call out that they like flush the enemy team, if you have a boost, you could just say, okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and use a boost just so that my players can stay out in the field and keep that aggression on. Um, but, but probably the most common way that I use it is, is to get commanders to back out in the field faster. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right, what is your first tip, Odin? <sighs> okay. Um, cool. cool. There's a lot of words about to come. Yeah. Uh, so I, I guess on the topic of, of doubling and boosting and all that, um, my first tip is focusing on communication. Uh, I think communication is very important for the ammo, specifically how you communicate. Um, mm, I tell. think this matters a lot more than on Medic. I think on Medic, you can kind of spew information to your team. I think on ammo, there, there's a lot that you need to be considering. So uh, for one thing, uh, don't broadcast to the enemy team that you're resupplying your heavy. Mm -hmm. I see so many ammo players make calls to resupply the heavy, and they'll say, okay, we're resupplying X player now, or go, or mm -hmm. whatever. They broadcast it very loudly. Um, I think if you are playing with a medic that you aren't very synchronized with, you aren't very used to playing with them, it's fine to have a level of communication. Um, but there's a lot of other ways to do it. Uh, you can do some pointing. You could say, um, you could preface ahead of time, like, like uh, okay, uh, we're going to be getting the heavy next. And then, and then you're like, wait, wait, wait. And then, and then you can maybe more quietly say go, or you can say now or, or, or whatever. Um, just don't be projecting your voice out into the field and, and try to keep yourself from giving dead giveaways. Uh, if, if you're more synchronized with your medic, then, uh, you know, you can maybe work out your own little ways. I, I hear a lot of players do, they, they'll just say one, and it can be hard to tell if somebody's like back for resupply or if they're resupplying mm -hmm. the heavy. Uh, you just broadcasting to the enemy team that your heavy is resupplied means that they now know that they have an eight second window to push in on you. And mm -hmm. that's not really something that you want to give them. Um, sorry, did you have something to say? No, just that it okay. was a very good tip. Um, and then there's some other bits of communication. Uh, when, when you're boosting, uh, let your team know. Uh, like, even if you're boosting off your commander's nukes, like, if you're more forward in the field, like, call out, you know, let people know that, that you're going to boost. Um, mm -hmm. If you're boosting and resupply, let people know that you're going to boost. Um, a lot of times uh, when I'm playing, especially with newer players, I'll say that I'm boosting and uh, I'll go to drop it and they'll still tag uh, the person, the commander that I'm trying to boost for anyways. And so they won't get the power boost. Um, and, and that kind of happens sometimes, but at the very least communicate it. Because if you don't say anything, then nobody knows. Um, and, and those shots are very important. Uh, you can also kind of coordinate the team a little with, with your communication. Uh, a lot of people maybe don't need lives, but could use a couple extra shots out in the field while they're not doing anything. You can let them know, like, hey, I can hit you over here if mm -hmm. you want to come over here for shots. Um, mm -hmm. that, that, those things help. And, and then also uh, letting three hits know when you're resetting their shield is very important. Uh, even if it's like a really good intuitive thing, I always call out, I'm like resetting your shield tech. Resetting your shield tech. Even if, mm -hmm. if it's something that they wanted, um, just because uh, it, it lets them more easily get into the headspace, like, okay, I'm getting re my shield reset right now, mm -hmm. and it lets them start backtracking or playing around that. Um, oh, okay, I see. 
And uh, like, it, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't seem to matter that much much because you know they're, they're just getting shut down anyways and they should be knowing what to do about that but but it helps a lot to have just like that quick little like you don't even gotta think about it you know that your shield is getting reset you know why you got put down um and you can start playing around with that rather than having to process what just happened like oh did i get shot from somewhere else okay no that was shots resupplied um all that and uh sometimes like if you're not completely sure like if you if your three hit comes around and they are on one shield you can say i'm going to reset your shield and it gives them the chance to say no yes just tagging your three hits just because they're they're missing one out but not communicating with them properly is mm -hmm. uh can be very rough especially i mean i've seen ammos re go to reset their commander shields and their commanders are dropping nukes so <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and you know to an extent it's kind of everyone's responsibility to communicate but to in the same token that that goes to you as well like just tagging people just because you're the ammo right. is not worth it uh, an argument mm -hmm. could be made for the medic especially if like the enemy team is dropping nukes you know uh, there's a lot of value in just tagging people and you don't always have time to ask permission first mm -hmm. uh, but for the ammo it's not entirely necessary uh, just really communicate everything you're doing as much as possible without giving too much weight to the enemy team yeah that is a really good tip I have heard many a player say no when the ammo does something that they believe is helpful to uh, one of their teammates because they were about to get a missile off on an enemy player, but the ammo's like resetting your shield, or uh, <laughs> the heavy asks for a reset to shoot someone, and the ammo hears resup and comes out and shoots down their heavy or something like that. Um, yeah, that um, sorry, good. Oh, you just, you hold a lot of power uh, with this support privilege and the ability to reset your team and resupply them, but you, you got to do it right and give people a little more respect for their autonomy. Yeah, I, uh, I, I you brought up the uh, reset that language difference, and uh, I, I have a reset point that I get into later on that I was going to talk about this in, but but the language I think is oh, very just important. Go for it, yeah. Um, and I really wish people would clear it up. Uh, and, and so I try to, especially as a heavy, but you know, if I'm playing ammo or whatever, I, I try to clear it up with my resupply. Um, I, I personally like to use uh, uh, like reset me for getting re reset by my resupply, getting my shield reset, or mm -hmm. resetting my heavy shield. And I like to, I call out gun or phaser if I need to acquire a reset because it's so quick into the point and there's nothing else that I'm communicating with that word where I can just say gun. And then it means I want you to show me your phaser so that I can reset off of you. Right. Um, you don't have to use those words. Obviously everyone has their own communication preferences, but clarifying your, the mm -hmm. language that you use with your team beforehand is so important, especially if you're on like a hybrid team or a team that's not very practiced together, there can be right. really huge communication barriers. And so making sure that you know in advance this word means this action, it just it, it makes it so much better because you you do not want to be resetting your heavy while they're trying to grab a reset to missile the enemy commander. Right. Yep, that is a way you focus on communication is clearing up your language, reset and reset. Very similar. It's sort of an intuitive thing that everyone knows to say. But yeah. Gun and phaser are great substitutes because just because they sound so different from resup or reset. All right, you good if I move on to my next tip? <clears throat> yeah. It's my favorite tip. My favorite tip of all the tips. Don't get shot when your team needs shots. And I say it with annoyance because I've done it and it's happened so many times. Um, the medic, with their limited lives, they are pretty much always tucked in a corner, um, not able to get shot, usually by stray, uh, stray lasers flying from across the arena. But this is not a, um, a responsibility that the ammo bears, and so quite often I will see ammos, ammos and medics, they're lining up to do their doubles on some people, medics in a corner, but the ammo's just standing right smack in the middle of an open space. Uh, with a false sense of security. Or they're trying to like half defend, half resupply. And anyways, um, 
commander is in there and they're getting doubles, they need shots probably just as much as they need lives. And then ammo gets shot down by a stray laser. And then it's now an entire eight seconds before the commander can get shots. Um, that eight seconds can is eight more seconds that the commander is not on the field and it makes the defense have to work even harder to keep the enemy out while the commander is getting resupplied. Um, end of the day, just if you're resupplying a teammate, put yourself in a position where you're not going to get tagged by any stray people unless you intentionally pop out to try to shoot someone. Which you shouldn't anyway. I mean, Odin, you mentioned something kind of like this at the very beginning of the video. It is so much easier to resupply your team than to do four other teammates worth of tagging yourself. So when it comes down to like one of your teammates is so low on shots that they need shots before they can even go back out on the field, remove yourself from the situation and get them their shots and don't get tagged by stray lasers um, as a priority. You don't have to defend in that situation. Have someone else defend. It's really important that you stay up and give your team shots. Yeah, I, and I think this is such an important point because um, a lot of people, especially a lot of intermediate players, view ammo skill as being able to actively tag people on the field while being a resupply. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that the ability of the ammo to support the team is very important, but um, just because you don't have limited lives doesn't mean that being shot down has no consequences. Uh, right. Being deactivated for eight seconds and making your teammates wait for a full extra uh, piece of downtime before they get shots is not good. Um, you you need to be making sure that you're giving your team shots, and, and then you can focus on your other things. Uh, for the most part, if people are, are inside the resupply needing to get filled up, you want to do more watching rather than being actively participating. Um, mm -hmm. You still are a set of eyes. You still can peek your head up and be more defensive than the medic and still be covering for the medic. But prioritizing the resupply is so important. And uh, a lot of players kind of uh, skip over that. And, and, and something that I kind of encourage you to do because um, ammos don't have as much to show for their bad plays as medics do. Um, if you get shot eight times as a medic with the enemy team never pushing in, it's kind of a telltale sign like you were being bad. Um, as an ammo, look at your shots resupplied stat. Um, if you are getting deactivated all the time and you aren't really resupplying as much as the medic is, then you kind of need to make sure that you're focusing on getting those resupplies in. Um, I've had games where my ammo was too caught up in trying to shoot across because they saw shots they could take and then they'd get put down and, and I would get six rounds of lives with no shots. Oh my gosh. And that just kills the momentum of the game. Yeah. I mean, that's like six rounds at minimum. That's 48 seconds being down without getting any shots. Like I've, I've been taken out of the game for a whole minute just for that. That's it's so bad. It's mm -hmm. so bad for the momentum of the game. You, 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 you can support the field, but not when people need shots. Uh, giving shots is absolutely the priority. You, you give, you know, you give a scout two clips. It takes a few, It takes a matter of uh, like nine seconds. You tag them once. You wait for the downtime. You tag them again. Nine seconds. Now your scout has twenty shots that they can go out into the field with. Mm -hmm. while you support them and they can do so much more with that than you standing up to take a few pop shots while your scout is back and, and with even just one player being back in the resupply you already like don't have as many people in the field to capitalize on your efforts and you're not going to capitalize on it because hopefully you're not running into the enemy resupply as an ammo mm -hmm. um and so it, it's especially true when more people are back if your commander is back there's no reason for you to be taking those pop shots. Fill your commander up. Your pop shots don't really matter that much until your commander is back out in the field to capitalize on it. Yeah, that is well said. Really, it's like the sooner you get all four of your teammates back out on the field, the sooner you can be taking those shots and controlling some space and helping them out. 
But as soon as someone's back, I mean, that, that's got to be your priority. It's sort of like you're delaying the inevitable. You get put down. The nine seconds it could have taken to get your scout back out now becomes, what, 17 seconds? Yeah. Come on. Give your team shots. And don't get shot. Yeah. Very, huh. very good tip. That's, a, I think, a very important point. Oh, it's my favorite. Now, tip number uh, four, what you got? All right. Um, yeah, so um, I guess uh, carry on on with that. Uh, I will say that my tip is to watch the field. Um, it's, it's kind of a counterpoint that we're covering a different space of ammo there, but, but these aren't contradictory. Um, they're they're mm -hmm. both very important tips that take place at the same time. Uh, and, and so kind of the purpose here is that the, the ammo has a lot more flexibility because you can get resupplied with lives. That being said, you don't want to be out as a scout because you, you need to be able to resupply your team and you, you still don't fill up that much. But watching the field is a very good role that the ammo can fill mm -hmm. and, and you can gather a ton of information. You can uh, provide those supporting shots to your team. Um, you could even resupply teammates out in the field. Uh, the the best instances of this are in very open mazes in Loveland and Detroit specifically. Oh, definitely. Uh, the ammo has massive amounts of visibility and can influence the field in so many ways. This also mm -hmm. holds true in Brisbane. Uh, if anyone out there listening plays in Brisbane, uh, mm -hmm. or if anyone is planning to go to internationals in Brisbane next time they host, uh, it, it the ammo has so much vision and so much influence on the map that it, it is very crucial for you to be able to watch how the field is developing. Uh, and even the watching alone gives you so much benefit. Uh, when you get flushed, you already know how the flow of the game is happening and you can uh, take better routes to keep your medic safe or move to areas where the other team doesn't have as good of an angle. Uh, but then there's mazes like New Zealand, which we just played in, where there's very minimal visibility usually for the ammo. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this, I would say that you want to find opportunities to gain uh, information and there's a lot of good ways to do this one of the best ways is when you're getting resupplied with lives backtrack into your resupply spot so you can go out take a quick look around and then backtrack back into your resupply spot and mm -hmm. so you're gathering information and you're creating a trail of safety um, so if that space is clear that's very vital information you know that there's nobody looking around there if you run into an enemy great now you have that path backtracked and you know that there's an enemy there that you can be paying attention to and focusing on. Um, if you see teammates there, you can maybe gather information from them or maybe uh, find ways to support them. Just, just find some way to gather that information. Um, another way is uh, to maybe uh, push up a little and take different angles. So, so in New Zealand specifically, Wherever you resupply, there, there's multiple entrances. And so having the medic watch one angle when you guys aren't actively having to resupply somebody, uh, the ammo could go and watch another angle, and you're at least providing more information than just sitting next to the medic. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think kind of like the really big factor comes in in how you're active in the field. Um, Obviously, the simplest and most straightforward is is taking those pop shots at people, seeing people with their backs turned, taking shots into people, taking shots into three hits, putting scouts down to release some pressure from your three hits. Um, but there's a lot more to it than that. Like I talked earlier about resupplying teammates in the field. Uh, I think that's like such an important thing to be able to do. And as an ammo, you have a lot more leeway to put yourself in the more vulnerable positions in order to get those off. Um, and then also uh like resupplying or resetting three hits uh my my stance on ammo is that your obligation first and foremost is to your three hits you want to be supporting your three hits as much as possible they rely on you so heavily and Dude, that's so let's get out of here <laughs> um i mean 
scouts are important too, but no, uh, we not. talked about a bit in, in the medic video that uh, you know, they, they don't need shots as much as they need lives. They do still need shots, but they fill up so fast and mm-hmm. so easy for you to just get them a couple while they're filling up on lives. Um, and, and that's kind of the extent of what you can do for your scouts, to be perfectly honest. With, with three hits and being able to reset their shield and with the value of giving mm-hmm. shots to your three hits... Mm -hmm. it's so your relationship with them is so important and and so some of the best ways to support them are um one of the things that i like doing is sending the three hits out a little faster than than they would be full on shots um so like say your commander comes back Uh, a lot of times what happens is your commander will be will hit full on lives or close to full on lives but be one or two shot resupplies down Um, Mm -hmm. You can send your commander out and you can push up a little bit with them and just linger behind and they're, they're clearing the way for you, but you're able to give them extra rounds of shots while they're putting themselves further into the field. That way they don't have to sit in the resupply, continue to fill up and then make that whole trek out. Um, You're just, you're just getting them in the field faster and you're supporting them. Um, You can still, if, if they need to fight someone, you can still just pause and give them a few and then still give them shots while they're getting where they need to go. Um, and then also if, if you don't need to be in resupply, you don't need to be resupplying people, you can be pushing up to give your three hits resets. Um, one of my favorite things is playing in the St. George arena, laser mania, mm-hmm. uh, especially uh, what, well, so like a lot of times what happens is uh, there's, if you haven't played in Laser Mania, the four corners of the arena are kind of like four little points that you want to control. Mm-hmm. The rest of the maze is just kind of middle maze stuff, but, but these four corners are very important uh, spaces you want to control. Three of them are platforms. One of them is kind of a, like a cave area. Um, and so a lot of times your commander is going out and they're, or you're heavy, and they're taking one of the corners or taking a corner platform. Um, and so if you know that they're holding there and you're able to kind of still be near the medic, but pushed up a little bit, you can actually watch them and give them resupplies of shots and reset their shield even, or give them a reset if they need to reset off of you while they're on those platforms. And so being able to take those little positions where you can provide active support to your three hits, especially as they're going back into the field is very important. Um, I often find that the hardest parts of the game for most three hits are going back out into the field after getting resupplied. Mm. You come back, you lose all your momentum, you lose all your presence in the game, you are no longer dominating the space that you were dominating. And going back out and reclaiming that is very hard. Um, and so being there to like give them support, and give them a little extra edge in taking their territory back uh, can be a big difference for them. And uh, can can help them get their momentum back on track. Um, and then uh, uh, kind of something mm-hmm. uh, that, that also is an active field play thing, but without being uh, out in there, is uh, like setting up paths for your medic to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, Something that I like is to kind of control an outside space where if my medic sees somebody coming through, I can kind of hold this space that they can leave through my territory. And so they have an an avenue of escape, if you will. Um, Mm -hmm. And depending on the field, this could even lead to you being able to send your medic on pretty safe base runs. Uh, Like if you have a pretty good viewing angle of like the escape route that they need to take to get to bases. You can say, hey, it's clear right now. If you need to get your bases, send them there. They can do their run really quick, and you can hold that area in order for them to be able to come back. Um, And yeah, I think that kind of wraps up that point for me. I think those are like the main ways that I think the ammo should be active in the field and influencing the arena. But I mean, there's a lot that you can do as ammo, but I think these Mm -hmm. are kind of things that people can can consistently do and pick up on yeah i i'm really appreciative of that point because i think that's where people get the most confused about what they're supposed to do to play the ammo role to its its peak because you know 
you, you when you're sitting just with your medic and you're acting almost like a medic, you know that you're not using your role to its full potential, but you can also so easily overextend yourself and get caught getting like neglecting the responsibility to your team to be resupplying them. So all these yeah. different ways that you can actually utilize your support role and your special unique abilities um, to play a unique function on the team. I mean, every arena is going to provide different opportunities like this based on what side you're playing even in different arenas. They're, they're all going to look a little different. Some arenas definitely give the ammo way more vision than others, way more opportunities, or there's anywhere from one to five directions to be watching in different bases, you know, it's it's crazy. Um, it's really field adaptive for my mind. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and um, that's why, I, I, like, like I say, um, I, I try to keep things very generalized at, and, and keep these tips ones that you can use no matter what field you're in. Um, and so uh, I think in this tip, I had to get a little more specific and I gave specific examples of, of how to operate in open arenas and how to operate in closed arenas. But um, I mean, if anybody out there is like planning to play ammo for a tournament and, and wants to ask me anything or, or even just have chats, um, I'm down to have chats about like pretty much anything tag related. Um, mm. But but I mean, hit me up if you're like, oh, like, what do you think I could be doing in this arena as an ammo? Um, and I'll, I'll ramble, <laughs> I'll ramble a lot. <laughs> but if you're willing to put up with it, um, uh, I'll, I'll bounce ideas off with you all day. But, but I think that a lot of those things that I talked about are kind of very helpful, important things, where as long as you're making sure that you're doing it at the right time and that you're healthy about it, um, you'll have a big impact on your team. You'll, you'll help a lot. And, and, and like I said, like the ammo is a support role and, and this is how the ammo really supports, you know, I, I don't like obviously filling up shots is a support thing and a support duty, but I, I almost like, like I kind of view as like, like that's kind of like healing. And, and then the, the active roles you take in the field, that's kind of like buffing your team. You're like mm -hmm. allowing them to kind of do their jobs more easily and more effectively. Um, and, and that's kind of something that I really love about the ammo role is like, um, like it, it's a little different from the medic in, in that the medic has like so much of their own stuff they have to focus on. And the medic has to like, has to have like a lot of skill in a lot of ways. You have to be really good at slipping away and, and escaping. You have to be good at like conserving your lives. You have to be good at like managing all stuff. You know, a lot of things that we talked about in the medic video too, about like analyzing and understanding the information mm -hmm. and stuff. But like uh, the ammo has uh, so much potential to safely support the field because you can refill those lives. Um, and because shots are a very in-demand resource. Oh, yeah. Uh, Stocks are up. Like, always. seriously, uh, the, especially, like, you look at, like, uh, the shield resets. If you're resetting your heavy shield, you're giving your heavy shots every time, and you're protecting them from losing lives. So even if they have... Uh, one to one hit diff, and same same with commanders too, you know. But but you usually your heavy is sitting back more often. You get more opportunities. But but even with commanders, like they have three hit point shields. If they have a one to one hit diff, some of those hits are going to be against scouts and medics and ammos. And, and so so as it is, like if if a commander only fought scouts the whole game, they would have to have a one to three hit diff to go even between shots and lives. Mm -hmm. And with you resetting their shields and, and them actively getting uh, shots and not losing lives, uh, it, it, you're, you're able to kind of negate a lot of need for resupply. Because, uh, you know, like, their downtime is probably relatively similar because if, if they're out without that shield reset and fighting, then they're going to get put down anyways because they don't have a shield. Um, 
So, so realistically, you're just allowing them to stay in the field longer and minimizing the time that they need to resupply. So like those sh shots are incredibly valuable. Absolutely. Uh, to go way back to your point, if anyone does want to talk to Odin about the game, they're definitely down. Um, you've seen SpongeBob, of course. Yeah. And uh, there's a there's an episode with the scene where SpongeBob goes to work, and Patrick kind of just sits outside SpongeBob's house waiting um, for him to return. I think. And SpongeBob's <laughs> like, Patrick, what do you do when I'm gone? Wait for you to get back. Uh, that's. <laughs> That's essentially Odin with laser tag talk. Whenever, uh, you know, whenever people leave and the conversation ends, Odin is sitting there just waiting for that next conversation to give them that, you know, that hit of dopamine to talk. the The brain, the neurotransmitters just start firing off once they can start talking about laser tag. You know, so you're doing a favor to Odin by by going for help. You know. I mean, I can't say that you're wrong. So, oh, definitely, <laughs> I know you. And, uh, and I also fully welcome people to totally challenge anything that I say. Like, come at me. Like, actually, here's my reasoning for why the ammo should actually sit in a corner the whole game. Because, uh, because if you, if you genuinely believe something different than me and you have like reasons to back it up, I would love mm -hmm. to hear it all the time because. I'm always changing my perspective and opinion on the game. And I, I want to know what other people think too. I think everything yeah. is valuable information. So definitely, you know, we started off this episode by saying that Odin's a world champion ammo carrier. That's pretty good. Um, oh, what's the terminology? It's like, um, there's pathos, ethos, and logos, like, like credibility by authority or something like that. I forget which one it is, but essentially, yeah. You know, you could argue that Odin has the authority or the credibility just based on their status, but um, part of how I would say you got to where you're at is through innovation of the game and challenging the status quo to consistently improve on different positions and change the meta of the game. So it's going to happen again. It's not just an if, but it's a guarantee. If people keep playing Space Marines 5, all five positions are going to continue to evolve over time. Maybe some core principles Six will stay positions. the same, but yeah. don't forget about second scout, my favorite position. Oh man, that's a whole topic. <laughs> <laughs> whole okay. topic. Not grouping your two scouts as one role, you know. <laughs> but I, uh, I would. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We should honestly. Uh, I, I'll talk to you after we get the positions out of the way, because because this is this is a lot. This is a lot to talk about. But this I got, is I got only things I the want to beginning. Talk about. Yeah, I got things. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love I love innovating the game. I love having other people innovate the game. I love watching other people play. That's a huge part of the reason why I love Nats. Um, mm. I mean, I love the competitive games, but watching people play the game in weird ways. And it's not even actually a weird way. It's just weird to me because I'm like, oh, why would you do that? And it's not a bad thing. It's I didn't think of that because I'm one person. Um, and I like a huge part of, of where I'm at right now as a laser tag player comes from just like watching people do stuff and then mm -hmm. asking 800 million questions. Oh yeah. Like I'm just like, Oh, why do you do this? Oh, why do you do that? What? Oh, how did you do this? How did you do that? What, what were you thinking in this game? What, what, what do you think about what I did? And, and so like a lot of times, like, especially one of the things I did a lot was like ask people their opinions or perspective on what I did in a game. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times it's not like, like you don't want to take people's word for gospel. Like, like somebody says, Oh, well you should have done this or, or this more. Um, that's what would have helped them more in that instant. Cause that's kind of just the only thing we realistically can observe in a game is this would have worked mm. out better from my perspective. Um, but that's good information to have. Um, and so it's not that, oh, well, I need to be doing that all the time. It's, okay, well, how can I work this into my gameplay? Or, or what are little ways where I can help in these situations? And things to kind of just store in the memory bank. Um, but also, like, uh, I don't know. I, like, like, I ask people like their opinion on how roles should be played. And uh, you hear so many things, and it's like, that's really cool. 
but I feel like a lot of those actually come down to like kind of a similar principle. Like, uh, I mean, if you're okay with me rambling about another position for one minute, I'll try. Yeah, to you're keep good. It you're quick. good. Uh, I'll cover it in. I'll cover it in the heavy video. But, but we will I, get back to our ammo tips in a minute. But this is good oh, stuff. Yeah. Little little splurge. Um, I completely. There was a year uh, where where I just completely changed the entire way that I played heavy weapons. Um, and and maybe it's not a complete change because I was already kind of shifting towards it. But but I remember like all the things that I wanted to do as heavy and all the benefits I thought I could bring as heavy. And then, and then all the things that everyone else wanted me to do as heavy and what everyone's expectations were. And I realized like all of it kind of comes down to the same things. Like I wanted to influence the field. I wanted to use my shot power and strength in order to like have a uh, heavy presence in the game. Uh, but at the same time, obviously, the team needs to be defended and, and people wanted to feel very de defended, especially like my resupplies and stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, but really, all that comes down to is not letting the enemy three hits do what they want. Like, don't let the enemy three hits push into your resupply. And then you can control the field by not letting the enemy three hits do what they want. And so as long as you're able to focus on that, you're kind of covering your bases because like you can still help pull scouts out but i mean if a scout is pushing in with nobody else against your ammo and your medic hopefully they can put the scout down between the two of them hopefully mm -hmm. um and if not then you know maybe you gotta change some things up but but at the basis the core of heavy just comes down to controlling the enemy three hits that's how you do most of what the heavy wants to do um and so like understanding all these angles of the game and like learning what people think and learning what people want and being contradicted by people really just helped strengthen me as a player. Like the amount of times people told me I was an idiot or terrible at this role or terrible at that role. And I should be doing this or that differently. Like, um, well, heck you guys, you're mean. You're jerks. <laughs> uh, but and two, look and, where you're at now. And, and I don't, I don't want to, you know, necessarily give that specifically credit because there are more constructive ways to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I took everything as a learning opportunity mm -hmm. and I don't think anybody who told me, Oh, you should be doing this instead. Or, oh, you suck. You should be doing, I don't think I took any of their advice and just pasted it onto my gameplay. But um, I decided to take something from everything. Like, why do they think that? What is their expectation of me? And what is my role in the game? Um, so, yeah, talk about laser tag. That's a tip. That's a good universal tip. Oh, such so a good tip. We already have our, our, and... our first bonus tip of the episode. Talk about laser tag. <laughs> All right, let's keep this moving. Yeah, um, yeah. Did you talk about your tip, be a reset, give a reset? No, no. I just did my, my watch the field tip. All right. Let's go back up because it helps me in my brain if we go, you know, in order of the list. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll give my next tip after that. Unfortunately, Luke, I am pure chaos. So pure, you're, you're chaos and I am order. We're a good balance. <laughs> um. Please uh, tell us about this tip with resetting. Yeah, um, this one is very straightforward. Uh, be a reset and give a reset. I think the most, the biggest value that the ammo provides, particularly to the heavy, um, is resets all around. Um, and, and so this is kind of something that, like, it's covered a bit in a lot of the other tips, but but. Like really something to focus on, on is the reset mechanic being available actively at any point to be used as a reset by your heavy is very helpful. Um, and I don't mean you have to stand out in the open for them. Just keep an ear out. If they call for it, stick your phaser out. Um, mm -hmm. I like to watch the heavy as much as physically possible as an ammo so that I know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um but that's not always feasible. And, and maybe that's too hard for you at this moment. Maybe you're still trying to get the hang of resupplying people and doing all your ammo things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. Just, just make sure that you're paying attention and you're ready. Uh, and then 
give a reset. Uh, resetting your heavy shield is super valuable, especially um, if they just went and pushed up a bit and they like maybe traded with the commander, giving them a reset as fast as possible, letting them make that backtrack and, and giving the enemy commander as small of a window as possible to push through your reset, com your reset heavy into the resupply. Mm -hmm. Very important. Um, something astronomically important about this tip. Uh, this is very serious. Uh, you cannot be late on giving a shield reset. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Explain why, something... just for those who are new to it. <laughs> this is something that I feel... Uh, I, I almost didn't talk about not because I didn't want to, but it's almost something that like you forget to talk about until it happens. Mm -hmm. um, but so here's just to create a little hypothetical. Say your heavy pushed up because they knew the commander was around a certain corner. So they push up to that corner. They trade with the commander as they come around and they're asking to get their shield reset and they're asking, but your eyes are somewhere else and they're asking and they take some steps back and then you turn around and you reset their shield. And let's say three seconds has passed by. Um, sometimes they don't have a long enough trail any longer. So even if they backtrack, the enemy commander can still reset them. But, but really, the biggest oopsies about this is that the enemy commander can now completely ignore your heavy, walk all the way into your resupply, and push you and your medic out. Uh... And that is a really bad position to it's be. It's just in. a it's a real bummer, you know. It's it's not good. Um, it is way worse than just not giving the shield reset because it, it sucks. But at least being activated, your heavy has a chance to fight with the enemy commander. Um, and so I just like, like I said, just just you can't give a late shield reset uh, if you aren't actively watching your heavy and ready to give them the shield reset. It's almost not worth doing unless they specifically come back and say, oh, yeah, the commander's gone. Reset my shield real quick. Um, but, but if you hear a call out to get the shield reset and you're waiting until seconds later to do it, at the very least, wait until you hear it again. Um, you, or verify or you can ask your heavy, do you still want a shield reset? Um, use, the, use that communication we talked about earlier. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, be a reset for your heavy. Give resets to your heavy, and this is true for your commander as well. Um, but but golden rule is do not give a late shield reset. And then uh, one more thing to talk about on the resets um, while we're on the communication of or communicate while we're on the topic mm -hmm, of resets, mm -hmm, yeah. um, defending against a down three hit, um, very important. Sometimes what will happen is if your heavy is pushed up further, an enemy three hit will go get put down by your heavy and then push past, make a backtrack into your resupply right. and try to wait to come online to fight uh, the ammo and the medic. Um, this is a bluff. And Odin's about to tell you why you can absolutely crush this commander's hopes and dreams. You want to ruin this commander's entire career. That's right. And... Uh, it's very important to get this order down. And, and I'm thinking about this, and, and maybe it should have been good to mention on the medic video, but if, if your medic friends aren't watching this video, beat them up because everyone should watch every video. That's right. Uh, and then you tell them about this. Um, but using the power of resets, it is possible for two people to cumulatively shoot somebody three times. Uh, the very, very, very important thing with this is. In my opinion, the medic should always reset off of the ammo. Okay. Uh, and I'll get into that in a bit after I explain how to do it. So what's going to happen is the ammo and the medic are both going to shoot the three hit off the reset. Once you are certain that you and the medic have both shot him, the medic will reset off of the ammo and then tag the commander or the head or whoever the three hit is. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, the medic should tag the ammo and wait a second or two. Ideally, two seconds. If you don't know how long the commander's been off, you might want to get off as fast as possible just to try and push him out. But but if, if you know that you have that window of time, being able to wait two seconds to get that shot off after resetting off your ammo 
is super strong. Mm -hmm. Um, The reason is because uh, the medic then puts the enemy three hit down. The medic can peek out and get a reset off of your heavy who can't push in because of the trail. Uh, And then the ammo comes online. You can both now get a reset on them again, and then the medic can tag the ammo again. Um, The reason why I think the medic should reset off of the ammo is because in some instances, uh, you maybe panic or maybe you don't quite have that window on the second round. And uh, if one of you shoots the other while they're deactivated, it is way better for the medic to take a life off the the ammo ammo. (laughs) and for the ammo to take a life off of the medic. Um, But um, at the end of the day, that's that's order of operations. Mm -hmm. Uh, It it can be reversed. The medic can use the or the ammo can use the medic as a reset, especially if you're in a situation where somebody can come help you. it, and you don't have to worry about keeping the three hit down indefinitely. Um, but in situations where you're like kind of stuck because they're completely backtracked into you, completely safe from outside interference, mm-hmm. um, it's a lot more important. But uh, yeah, power of resets. Really simple. Both resupplies tag the three hit. One of them resets off the other and then tags the three hit the third time. Um, this is something that you want to communicate but you have to be fast about it. So as an ammo, I would recommend just saying reset off me as you're shooting the three hit so that your medic knows how, knows that they're using you. So many times I have in the past lapsed on the communication aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And my medic and I both tag each other at the same time because, um, okay, I'm a little, I feel bad about this in hindsight. Um, but okay. I used to be very judgmental of newer players. Uh huh. And I would say this medic isn't gonna put the three hit down. So, so yeah, I was just, stuff. I was just gonna say that. Well, the 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 move that you described the commander doing in the situation is a move that I will absolutely use in members' night games because I'm thinking, oh, these resupply aren't going to get the resets off. I can just waltz in past the heavy, and they're gonna run for it, even though I'm a deactivated commander. But um, this maneuver you described is, it's simple, but it just requires the team to do their due diligence and actually execute it. Yeah. And hopefully in most arenas, you can have a teammate come back to help deal with the three hit. And right. in some arenas, uh, at the very least, you're buying yourself eight seconds where the three hit is deactivated and you can actually leave and go to your heavy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and go somewhere where it's safer from the three hit. Um, but but being able to just at least get it off the first time is very important. You have the power to do it. You don't have to be scared of a deactivated three hit. That's right. You Because there's a psychological aspect. You do it once, and then you stare the commander in the eyes, and you aim at your teammate, and they know, oh, they'll do it again. I better run. Yeah, and especially if you get it off the second time, uh, they will not stay in there, and they probably won't try to do that again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Unless Good. they're a butt. <laughs> yeah, and and look, there are some butt commanders out there, so be ready to <laughs> be ready to reset. And, butt commanders, uh, if you will. And you know what? This is already a long episode. I just want to throw in one more comment, hearkening yeah. back to the ammo giving a reset to the heavy shield um by the time this episode comes out there will be an episode that i did with death knight about roster construction and in that episode we talked a lot about synergy between different groupings of players on a team like for example commanders being supercharged by having two scouts that coordinate really well with them well the heavy and the ammo as i think you're going to talk about a little later very much interact a lot throughout the game and so when so you you might think okay there's a there's an odin heavy that i have to go up against and that by itself you know 
it's scary. You think about what Odin's going to do. That's fine. But what if you got an Odin heavy and a mischief ammo backing that Odin heavy up and they're super in sync. It like, it makes the Odin heavy so much more capable of performing their job, you know? Like, this is one way that you essentially make your heavy more than the sum of their own, more than what they can be by themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and that's kind of a, a common thing that, that you'll see come up throughout this episode is, is that um, the ammo and the heavy are so much more powerful together. Yeah. All right, let me move on to one of my tips before you... Before we go on to that tip. Um, this is the tip called Be Mindful of Your Fragility. One of the most common... Sorry, the, the, the most epic fail of any SM5 team is when an ammo dies out early and the game is literally just over for them. Because even if they put up a great fight, everyone runs out of shots and then they're all walking resets is an awful time so people compare the ammo to the scout often because you're both one hits and you can both get your lives back and that's fair you have those things in common but that's some of the only things you really have in common with the scout um unlike the scout you only have 20 maximum lives instead of 30 and you only get three back for resupply rather than five and additionally um, you don't often have the opportunity to, to have your lives be a priority over other players because you can't give people shots when you're deactivated. So what can sometimes happen is that an ammo is misprioritizing their duties while playing low and they put themselves and the whole team at a huge risk by basically being at risk of getting killed out of the game or getting killed out of the game. Um, Hey, did I notice that you snuck in an ammo priority <laughs> chart into my tip, which I yeah. think is genius. I'm going to read it out loud as though I'm the one who wrote it. Yeah. Um, here's the number one priority for an ammo is stay alive. Even if your team has no shots, they can't get shots later unless you're alive. So if it comes down to you have one life and your teammate has no shots, let them be without shots for a freaking second. And make sure that you don't get killed out by anybody coming around the corner, because that would just be bad news bears. Second priority is to give shots once you are sufficiently alive. Um, then you can watch the field instead of actively giving shots. Then you can actively support the field. And um, pro tip, in all four of these stages, you can actually be receiving lives. Yeah. Um, so one thing I I think the two points I put in here are more specifically you should be playing at 15 plus lives whenever you possibly can because you start out at 10 and te that's technically halfway um, but that's also not much at all 10 lives with no shield that's if you get hit five times you're at crit you're at a really bad spot um, even getting hit twice eight doesn't feel very good either so I'd recommend getting up to 15 lives and playing from there as much as you possibly can. Or just 20. 20 is the best, obviously. Yeah. Um, and also, when you are in the mess of resupplying other teammates, there's a little trick that you can pull off. Just double your teammate, and then the medic immediately tags you and gives you lives. And it really adds about a quarter to half of a second to the total amount of time a player gets resupplied in it is completely yep. worth it to sneak in your own resupplies while doubling other people because you um, shouldn't you shouldn't be fighting anyways as yeah. we mentioned earlier you're not getting shot so put yourself down to be getting yourself full as well and uh, then you'll be ready to get back on the field quicker yeah i, I will say that that i kind of have a, a soft cap on that though if, if three or four players are back um i, I assuming you're fairly healthy which you should be staying fairly healthy throughout the game so if three or four mm. players are back you should be okay to not you're get right, lives right. for a little bit um I, I would if you get lives at the end of a cycle on three or four players you're that you're now becomes a significant a lot for the first player. Yeah. um 
And it's a lot easier to get a couple resets into scouts real quick and say, you need to go for 15, 30 seconds. Um, and then you can get those lives in on the rotations. Um, that, that's kind of like my one little, like, yeah, but getting lives in on, on rotations is super good. Um, and if it's something where like, maybe you, you got a round in and you need lives, uh, definitely tell your medic, get me on the next rotation. You don't want to get got late. This mm-hmm. is kind of a similar thing as uh, giving a late shield reset. Now you're going to be lagged and there's going to be a long window where people are sitting around. Um, just say, get me on the next rotation. Um, it won't be too long. You'll get some lives. Um, but yeah, yeah, get lives in on, on resupply rotations. Very good. Very good Indeed. stuff. Yes, super good stuff. Being alive. Um, and yeah, play on, play on lives. Um, you get three lives back per resupply. So if you get down to 17 lives, get a resupply. Um, yeah, seriously. You don't need to be in the field. There's a lot of instances on other positions where like heavy has to watch a three hit that's starting to come in and so maybe they'll deal with him and then try to get a life um you know Mm -hmm. maybe uh commanders are holding like a really important angle or maybe they're two off the nuke and yeah that they could use lives they don't need it right the second so they could get the nuke and then get lives um as an ammo you don't really have anything that anywhere where you need to be out the only thing you need to be doing is giving resupply. So if you don't have to give people shots, get lives. And, you know, like, like we said, you can even work it in while you're getting shots. Um, but typically, you should be playing as healthy as possible. You know, if you're full, uh, something I like doing uh, is, is just counting, counting down my lives. Okay, I got tag one, I got tag two, I got tag three. Okay, I'm going and getting lives real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are ever at 10 lives, I would say, you need to fill up. Uh, you no longer are popping out and taking shots right now. You aren't pushing out into the field to support your team. You're now getting lives. That is, that is your obligation to the team. Um, yeah. I, uh, I, okay, I, you know, I mean, I, I feel like I played pretty yeah. well in general at Nationals uh, this well, year. clearly. On ammo. And, uh, Honestly, I would say that the biggest contribution I had to my team is that I never died out uh, early. And I don't just mean the first couple minutes. I never died out before the medic. And a lot of times I would be alive with a three hit at the end. Um, Being alive is super important. Uh, If your medic dies out, an ammo and a heavy paired up together can do a lot of work. And Mm -hmm. a lot of times that can stall a game out and save you from the elim. Sometimes you can push for an elim even. Um, And, well, (laughs) I have an example of that. Oh, you have an example on it. (laughs) Oh, I I, I was on the receiving end of it. You go ahead. Um, I mean... It's a good uh, lesson for the viewers. It's for the the kids. The very first match of Nationals this year, uh, Kodama, the heavy, and I, the ammo, were the last two alive on the team. And I was resetting his shield. I was giving him shots, and he was covering for me. Um, and we lasted long enough for Kodama to get a nuke cancel, for us to whittle down the enemy team, and then eventually eliminate them. Um, and even if we didn't get the elimination, there was no way for us to be eliminated out of the game, which would have been the only way for us to lose the match. You got the elimination. Um, and uh, that's just... It's just so important. It's so important for the ammo to be alive. Uh, you aren't just done once your medic dies. You don't have to just live until your medic dies. You need to live. You need to be alive. When your medic dies, you want to be at 20 lives. Maybe the enemy team like nuke your medic out. Maybe you're at 17 or 14 lives. Uh, ideally, you want to be as close to 20 as possible when your medic dies out because you provide so much value to your team just by being able to reset your three hit shields Mm -hmm. um you 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 gotta stay alive no no excuses for it you are the the closest person to your medic or should be for most of the game there's no reason for you not to have lives well said all right what's your next tip okay uh 
this actually, believe it or not, piggybacks off that last one. Yeah, uh, it seems pretty similar. It, it, the, the tip is, is that you're the heavy's best friend. Um, and this is a part of the reason why you want to have so many lives all the time is because the ammo and the heavy are so powerful together that you always want to be available for your heavy. Um, being used as a reset takes lives, believe mm -hmm. it or not. <laughs> And so if you're on 10 lives being used as a reset by the heavy, it sucks. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah. Um, but if you're on 20 lives and the heavy uses you as a reset, it's not really that bad. You're kind of okay. Um, and, uh, you know, giving your heavy a shield reset is a very good defensive maneuver, but also it leaves you temporarily vulnerable. Somebody could pop around the corner. And so you want to be able to trade with people and be healthy enough. Um, but uh, getting down more into like the tip specifically, uh, the ammo and the heavy are are just a phenomenal force. So on defense, you want to be giving shield resets every time your heavy trades with the enemy commander, um, just as much as possible. Most of the game, I would say, you don't have to worry about giving people shots as an ammo. I would say that you probably spend like. I don't know, just to throw out a number for like members nights and stuff, because things can get very varied and chaotic, say like 30% of the game, you have to be resupplying teammates. Um, the rest of the game, your main focus should be on your heavy, kind of at all times. Um, mm -hmm. Your commander has scouts to back him up. He has a lot to play around with. Um, the heavy kind of just has the ammo, but they also kind of only need the ammo. If a heavy goes out, and just blasts away and gets two taken out of their shield and can get a shield reset and can backtrack. Mm -hmm. They're now perfectly fine. Even if they traded, even if, if they lost, got hit twice, they're not down to life. Um, and uh, the heavies shot power means that like, as, if they have resets and they can just keep anybody down forever. And so if you're just there, to be used as a reset they can keep anybody down uh, so really just kind of provide it all for them and uh obviously they need shots in order to keep shooting people but if let's say your heavy is just going to town and just tearing uh -huh. it up say they shoot five people and then get shot twice by one hits or once by a commander or something and you need to reset their shield that's like an insane shot ratio. And even then, just you resetting their shield is keeping them so healthy on shots. Um, they can just keep putting work in. Mm -hmm. uh, and so th there's, there's the defensive component of it where you're actively ready to be a reset and, and to give shield resets. Uh, but also, um, there's kind of an offensive component to it too. Mm. Uh, especially in situations where your heavy has a straightaway to the enemy team um they can push up and be more aggressive and you can reset them or they can reset off of you um kind of like i talked about before with like in saint george with heavies and commanders being able to take positions on platforms right they can do things like that and control territory and be aggressive and with you there to support them there's way less risk to them because uh that's kind of like the worst thing about heavy is that you lose a lot of like you can't have as much presence in the field because you lose your stuff too quickly. You have very few lives and shots. Um, and so when you're losing those, you just have to go back for resupply. But if you have an ammo enabling you, all of a sudden you have, let's just say 50% increased field mm -hmm. time without you getting lower crit. Um, and so that's kind of one way that I recommend people to play around with is being readily available for your heavy while they make these plays to control territory. Um, and then on a more advanced level, something that I have been playing around with recently is being aggressive as an ammo with your heavy. So what we were doing in nationals is the heavy and I would both get filled up because that's kind of the top priority for both of you. You both want to be full kind of all the time. Mm -hmm. And then if we're filled up and we don't need to be doing anything. Um, I would allow the heavy to push out and be aggressive and I would support them and kind of minimize that risk to them and enable them. And, and all of a sudden 
the enemy team doesn't just have to deal with a heavy, they have to deal with a heavy that can get shield resets and can pick up free resets whenever they want. Um, and, and so, I mean, like I said, this is a bit more of an advanced tip, so feel free to, like, hold off on this until you're more comfortable in the role, but, um, I, I mean, it, it's such a powerful maneuver. And then beyond that, uh, you can kind of, like, uh, give your heavy attacking support in a similar way that scouts give to commanders. Uh, something that I had done quite a few times that you could actually see in the VODs for the tournament is I would actually take the lead to push in with Kodama and I would tank shots from the enemy heavy and then Kodama would come around and put the heavy down. Um, and it's, it's just such a powerful swing to be able to have somebody partnered up with the heavy um, in order to, to get work in. And, and really, it can only be the ammo because only the ammo provides that much benefit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you need that much benefit to outweigh the negative potential because since, since the heavy puts everyone down in one shot, they don't need a scout to take a hit out the way that a commander does. And, and so a scout basically just becomes a, a detriment, right? Because now the enemy team can use the scout as a reset against the heavy. But since you have more capabilities, you can reset the heavy shield. You could linger back. You could partner up with the heavy, um, depending on like your comfort levels and how well you play together. Um, but but you can provide way more active support to your heavy. And and realistically, your heavy still needs to defend. And so so they're still going to go back anyways. And you don't even need to sit on them forever. But but definitely remember the priorities. Right, stay alive, give shots, watch the field, actively support the field. So actively support your heavy if you're comfortable doing it. And, uh, but you need to make sure you're watching the field and having that awareness too, if, like as a higher priority. If your team is going back for resupply, especially your commander needs shots, you have to go back and then make sure that you're giving your commander shots. And if you've lost lives, you need to make sure that you're getting your lives. So we're back to the priority list. You got to stay alive then give shots, then watch the field, then actively support the field. Um, but as long as you're being responsible mm -hmm. and you're keeping everything in a row, um, you are an incredibly powerful force. Wow. You know, it wasn't until just the last few days that I've really started to associate the ammo so heavily with the heavy. But it makes sense. Um, you really view it as a support role. I mean, we've talked about in the scout video you know, you don't want to be the one making the big plays. You want to be supporting the three hits, making the big plays. They're the ones who can actually, they're equipped to take territory from other players and to take out other three hits and be be front and bold in the team strategy where everybody knows where they are. Um, this is, yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it really can play as a support, a buff, an equivalent of the way scouts back up a commander. Uh, all this makes a lot of sense, and I did see you kind of like, I don't know, kind of like floating. You know Rosalina from Mario, and how she's got yeah. the Luma <laughs> floating around. The Luma. <laughs> yeah, I you you were reminding me of a Luma uh, with Kodama at Nats at times. <laughs> Kodama pushing up, and you were just kind of like crouching behind, like I'm here if you need me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said that a lot too. I'm like I'm here if you need me. I'm here if you need a reset. <laughs> If you need to reason, uh, communication, got to communicate. If your heavy knows that they got somebody backing them up, a lot of heavies will start tearing stuff up. You'll be surprised. Because um, usually heavies don't get that. Usually, uh, you know, they'll do quick little, okay, the commander's back for resupply. I'm going to go push out now. Um, honestly, something that I loved about this was that it enabled us to do so much more because the the heavy could could defend while the commander's filling up. We could get some resups into the commander. The heavy could start pushing out a little slowly, come back, get some resupply, and then all of a sudden, the enemy team has to deal with a commander and a heavy ammo pair. And I'm gonna be real. Uh, that obviously, you want to protect and defend the medic, mm -hmm. but if your medic doesn't have to do anything and can just go be alone in a random corner that nobody wants to go to. The whole enemy team is probably going to be pretty lost, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> You're like, right? why is nobody here? <laughs> and I think that happened a few times where I was like, DK, you're good on your own, right? And he's like, yeah, and so he'd watch quarters. And he's like, oh, wow, people are coming this way. I'm just going to, I'm going to go somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> right. Somewhere just, else. 
<laughs> like what? where where is everybody <laughs> can't shoot me if they can't find me <laughs> and that's you know that's something where uh you know i mean uh i i kind of like uh, i want to keep these to like tips so that people can have like clear stuff but, but i would love to do like a philosophy video one sometime where it's like mm. not advice in any way don't take it as advice we're just rambling and thinking about nonsense um but but i definitely think like there's so much that can be done with like just giving the medic some freedom and not just sitting on top of them just for the sake of sitting on top of the medic mm -hmm. um but yeah and then and then what, one last thing for the for the heavy pairing is, is the end game like i was talking about mm -hmm. um being able to give infinite shield resets to heavy, super good, especially if your heavy player is really good. Um, uh, back to communication, uh, you need to be communicating with your heavy on this because when you are the last two alive and you see the heavy trade with somebody and then you immediately give them the shield reset, there could be two more people pushing you. And, and that can be really bad. So uh, usually what will happen is the ammo will say something like, let me know when you want a shield reset. And the heavy will trade and say yes. And then you, you give them a shield reset. And, and that little bit of communication is super important. You want to be really fast about it. You want to be really on point. But, but you need that level of communication because the, you want to stay safe so that you can give those resets. And the heavy is the one that will be having all the information and knowing the battles that they're taking. Mm -hmm. um, but that is it, it, the first thing you should do as an ammo when, like, after your medic dies out, after the initial chaos that usually ensues from that, you want to find your heavy and you want to stick to them. Um, if other people want to fill up, they can come find you and voila, they have a heavy protecting them and they can fill up on shots. Um, a lot of ammos will decide, oh, well, the medic's dead. I'm a scout now. Um, but you provide so much value to the team. You do so much more when you aren't just being a shot and, or a shot, a scout and burning through your lives. Right. Um, so, yeah, that uh, that's kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, the tip just kind of summarized is, is to focus on and, and prioritize the heavy. You're your heavy's best friend. You're both so much better together. And when your medic dies, your, your number one priority is to stick to your heavy. Awesome. No, thank you for your in-depth tips. These are, we're giving the people the high quality stuff, you know, and this is top shelf tips the 20, juice. 25 minutes each we we take to explain these these are these are gold I love okay it. all right i got i got one that doesn't take very long though um learn the totem pole defense with your medic a common situation you are in your base heavy's down commander is running in with their three shot power and they're going to try to tag you and the medic we briefly mentioned the situation in the medic video. Um, it's common for the ammo to, you know, you're, you're a bodyguard, right? You're, this is an honorable move. For the ammo to step out first and valiantly fight the commander, they tag each other one for one. Commander has two shield left, and they're coming in, and the medic now has to fight the commander. They tag each other one for one. Both resupplies are down, put up a valiant effort, but the commander's still alive. And now, they tag the heavy, tag the ammo, tag the heavy again, tag the medic, everybody runs away. Everything's in chaos, it's all over, you lost the game. But you were brave, right? You didn't use the totem pole defense. So, let's rewind and imagine this new situation. Your heavy's down, commander's coming in, ammo and medic look at each other, and they stack up on a wall. Uh, maybe the... Ammo crouches down and the medic stands up. So both of you will basically see the commander at exactly the same time. If all goes according to plan with the totem pole defense, the commander will tag one of you and you'll both tag the commander at the same time. Commander now lost two lives or uh, two of their shield. And now in the split second when the commander is going to tag whoever they didn't get with the first shot, that player takes their second shot, and now everyone's deactivated. Basically, in the first exchange, you got two hits on the commander instead of one hit, and that allowed the, uh, the resupplies to take down the commander by themselves, rather than going one at a time and having the commander still be active by the end of the exchange. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think this is super important. I, I think resupplies, learning how to fight three hits is huge. And, and I think it's a skill that a lot of people actually don't have. Um, not to say that they suck, just it's they not something They haven't practiced that, it or they're not conscious of it. Yeah. yeah. Or, or they aren't confident enough to do it. And it, it is an intimidating thing. I mean, you have a three hit coming at you and, and you're a resupply, but everyone can do this. Oh, um, so easy. Yeah. That you have one spot to aim at. And even if your reaction speed isn't great, you're at least giving yourself way better odds than if you just run like chickens with your heads cut off or if you try and swing out or do do anything else. Um, I'm going to add a, a little bit to this because uh, I love mind games. Mind games. I love mind games. Yes, please do. Um, so there's a little extra, extra juice you can throw into this. Um, usually what happens is the medic is in a spot and the ammo is in a spot. And you trade with whoever as they're coming in. Uh, this happens pretty much any time you're set up as resupply. You should be able to shoot a three hit at the same time as each other. And this is regardless of if you're stacked up on each other in, in separate corners in a box or if, if you're taking two separate angles that both can just see the same entrance. Uh, in, in any way, you should both be able to take the shot at the same time. Uh, now, the thing is, when a, a commander pushes in, they're trying to tag everybody. And so even if you put them down, they're still like your, your, your resubs. Is, they're not entirely scared of you. And so they're going to look and they're going to say, oh, that's the medic. And they're always going to assume that the one that's squatting down or kneeling down or the most tucked in a corner is the medic. And the ammo is the one that peeks out first. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the way that you want to play it, is you want the medic to be in the safest position. However, they're now going to go in and prioritize where the medic is. So this is where you swap. Now, what you usually want to do is, uh, you know, you can do it right away if you're under heavy threat. Maybe, like, the commander leaves, you, they get pushed out by the heavy, and then you can put the medic down so you guys can sw swap places if you have to cross an open area, or you can just swap. But basically, the medic will go where the ammo was, and the ammo will go where the medic was. Mm -hmm. And now when that commander pushes in, they're going to prioritize tagging where the medic was, which is now where the ammo is. Right. And so you're potentially saving your medic lives by doing this. Um, and maybe it doesn't work, but uh, even if it doesn't, like at worst, you're running a 50-50 the same as it would be if you didn't switch. Oh, um, can I tell you something? Tell you a yeah. secret? It works. It definitely yeah. works. It doesn't matter how good a, a, a player is, how many times you've played against them. Because the thing is, it's, it's a simple probability game. Let's say that the commanders come in and they've played you all tournament. They know you're prone to switching the, the spots of your resupply. Well, what happens if you basically do it not every time, but just sometimes, right? The commander might come yeah. in and keep expecting you to switch places. And as long as you don't do it, like, like you can keep throwing them off just by not having a consistent pattern. That's exactly. all it takes. Never let them know your next move. Uh, yeah, and, and you can even, uh, you know, maybe uh, your heavy puts them down, but they still come into peak. Uh, and, then, and then maybe it happens again, and, and you, 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 you kind of keep it the same way, and then you swap on them the next time, or you swap when your heavy pushes up. Um, you, can, you can play around with this, but the, the concept of swapping spots with your medic Gives, gives you so many more opportunities. And, and uh, I, I really think that's like a very powerful tool that you can use. Like I said, I, I love mind games. Mm. Uh, I love just out playing and out positioning people. And, and so by kind of like, it's almost like drawing aggro to the ammo uh, by using the medic position as bait. Yeah, kind of. Um, it's, uh, it, it, you, it gives you better odds of preserving medic lives which at the end of the day is the goal so it's worth doing yeah definitely yep, yeah that was a good add-on to the totem pole you can also do the rotating totem pole and the in the flip-flops uh learn how to uh learn how to defend yourselves as resupply it's a very important skill well we'll expand on that in the philosophy episode oh yeah oh yeah oh i got i got juice for 
for defending yourselves as resupply. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, do you want to go to your final tip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put um, you put a bunch of arrows. We didn't talk about our notes. I did put a bunch. Of, Does it relate like, to my note? Yeah, yeah. Should yeah. I say my note first and then let you? Uh, it's up to you if you want to. It it, it kind of they they they're they're kind of they they kind of work together. Let me go um, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go first. Yeah. Um, my note was act as a. Let, you know what, Odin? Actually, we should do ours together. Okay. Okay. okay we're gonna we're gonna combine our tips, two tips into. We're gonna we're just gonna have a conversation. We're gonna, we're gonna alternate words so that no one can tell what we're saying, and you have to go decode it later. <laughs> All right, ready? Act. B. No. As. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. Okay. ridiculous so mine was act as a bridge between the medic and the rest of your team and Odin's tip is to be a scout for your medic these two do seem rather intertwined um, mine, mine was I was thinking if you're newer at ammo and you're kind of lost as to where you should be standing at different points in the game um, I think it's a good idea to use where your other teammates are standing as a reference point so as we've mentioned throughout the video, like you are different from a scout, but there are scout principles that you certainly can help contribute to the game with, such as holding space, communicating with your team, using trails to defend your medic, etc. Um, being a reset. But um, as we mentioned at the very beginning, you're not a player who should be pushing the front line yourself or taking on that job for yourself except for in very specific circumstances when all of your other priorities staying alive giving shots watching the field actually supporting the field like it's possible but in general in general you're a backline player your support to other players and so i want people to think of ratios when determining how far out into the field they should be going when they are in the actively supporting the field mentality if if your team has control of half of the map and they control you control about 50% of the field, maybe you should be playing at about 10 to 20% of what you control. Like if 0% is literally where the medic is, pushing out to about 10, 20%, if feasible, still puts you in a spot where you can be protecting your medic, um, communicating effectively with your team, and playing your role. If your team has, the, you're controlling most of the map and you're controlling 80% of the field, you shouldn't be standing right next to your medic. You should expand out to 30, 40% of the field, you know, get farther away and just use more of that space. And that way you can contribute more. But end of the day, what I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't be the person at the front. What you can do is you can move out into the middle of where your team controls to help support your other teammates pushing all the way up into the front. Like if your scout's holding an important midfield territory, you could you could take over for them so that they could push out even farther. Because there's no point in standing and defending your resupply, sorry, defending your medic, when no one's around to even attack you. That's your time to push out and take advantage, press your advantage. Yeah, um, and... Yeah, I think a good general rule of thumb is just not to push out past your scouts. If your scouts need to be more forward, you can tell them that. But but you don't need to be pushing out past them. Um, yeah. And, and a good thing to do if you're kind of not sure about what to do, because you, you definitely shouldn't be like actively attacking on your own accord as an ammo. Um, controlling choke points. Like controlling passages where the enemy has to go through in order to to push past because a lot of times the biggest risk you run into um when your team is that far forward in the arena is the enemy team saying okay we'll eat the shots we're just going to run past and make trails um so being able to control those choke points is something that you can do that's very helpful and effective uh without having to be like all the way in the resupply because if you wait until they get in and are actively attacking you and your medic, that's kind of a worse situation to be in since your team is so far away. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely you're not, you're not the front line, uh, but you, you can definitely be supporting the team. I, I agree with that a lot, especially like with controlling space. Um, it kind of ties into, you know, my point being a scout for, for 
your medic uh, and also something that I talked about with scouts is that like the best situation for you is to have the enemy team in between like in the middle of your team mm -hmm. um, you don't want to give them a good angle and, and so by being you know a little more forward and taking other angles you can force people who are attacking your medic to position themselves in between you and your medic where now they have to look out for two people because mm -hmm. um, your medic has a phaser and can defend themselves and, and you can help defend the medic and, and so by kind of yeah. being mindful and covering for your medic um you can kind of uh make it harder for people to be aggressive without having to totem pull right um, uh and then because honestly if, it's, if you don't mind me if i oh, may, sorry, it, because honestly it's safer yeah. for your medic when you two are split up and you're controlling the passage in to attack the medic uh it, it, it's yeah. It's a common instinct that if we're grouped together, I'm safer. But in Laser Force Laser Tag with the reset system, and the fact that human beings can only look one direction or point their phaser one direction, having two people in different spots is one of the best defenses you can have. Yeah. So yeah, let the enemy be yeah. between you and your medic. It's actually safer that way for the medic. Yeah. Um. And, and yeah, I mean, especially you said about the reset system. I, I mean, if your medic gets shot and they can just leave without getting reset, it's so much better. Because now, like, at worst, and this is like a totally insane, like, the enemy team, is, like, the whatever player is just on top of it. And for some reason, you never see them while they're doing this. At worst, they're taking a life off your medic every eight seconds. But realistically, it shouldn't even be that if your medic is repositioning well and your team can have can come back and so if it takes them you know 20 seconds to get back your medic is at worst losing one or two lives versus if you're there with your medic they can lose two lives just off getting flushed mm -hmm. because they got reset right um but yeah i mean definitely it you can find better positions to be in uh just make sure you get filled with lives like we talked about Back mm -hmm. to the ammo priority. Yeah, definitely. You're staying alive, you're giving shots, you're watching the field, you're actively supporting. Um, and if people come back for shots, you, you pull back in and you help them or you, or you do what you need to. Um, sometimes if you have a good line of sight, you can just resupply them from where you're at. But uh, yeah, and then if you don't mind me cutting a little deeper into my point. Cut deep. Um, uh, being a scout for your medic is uh, super good. Like, uh, and, and to kind of clarify on what that means, like, like we talked just now about uh, taking up better positions and stuff. Really, uh, when, when push comes to shove, you're a player with one hit power, one shot power, and one hit point, or one shield power, or whatever you want to call it. Um, which means that when you're defending your medic, you're effectively a scout. Uh, and so you kind of want to defend your medic as a scout mm -hmm. um and what that means is like taking better positions where you can get shots into people um using your backtracks using your defensive tools at your disposal stacking up and using the totem pole um but basically um you need to realize that that at the end of the day you when it comes to defending you are a scout um though you do get a cheeky little trick that is really fun or if you know that somebody's in a spot you can just spam shots at them all day long because you have infinite shots, which <laughs> is really fun yeah, to how, do. How did that tip not make the list? That is such a great, uh, fun little toy for the ammo. It, it's because it, it's because it's a fun thing. It's not too. If my ammo doesn't do that in game, I'm not gonna kick them in the butt or anything. <laughs> um, and I don't think it's something that projects you to being like, you know, a top tier ammo player. But it's a neat little thing you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and then beyond just defending, uh, you can be a more literal scout for your medic by observing the field and A, providing information to your medic, um, but B, helping guide them, especially when you flush. Um, something that I like doing is, is taking the initiative to go out and find places that we can move that are more advantageous um, because uh, I can get lives back my medic cannot. And so just kind of running around hoping to find places is rough. But if you can hold, hold down a little cubby for a second, 
get your medic tucked in there, and then you as the ammo can go find a better spot to go, then you can bring them over there. I did it a lot this Nats, where um, the goal was we would get flushed, and Death Knight, my medic, would go find somewhere safe to, to tuck in, and I would go look for a good resupply spot to go to. And mm -hmm. sometimes that even involved me kicking out the enemy resupply, uh, but, I mean, that's not a job requirement. But the same, oh, hey, the spot's clear, you know, come over here. Or, okay, you know, it's clear to come back because, like, they, they left or they got pushed out or whatever, so we can go back. Um, you know, providing that information, communicating, and, and just using the fact that you're kind of paired with the medic and you don't honestly have better things to do than to bring your medic somewhere safe. Um, you you can kind of go around and gather information and then it, it doesn't just have to be in dire situations you can be passively feeding your medic information something that i do a lot that i feel like people don't act actively think about um, but maybe you'll notice after hearing this mm -hmm. but something i do is just feed a ton of passive info i'll go out and be like oh cool our team has big box oh cool our team has uh baja oh, oh cool we have a uh, our commander has pushed them out of uh closet uh, I, I just like like little like like oh uh, our heavies are, our heavy just pushed across mm -hmm. uh, yeah. like little things little bits of information because your medic isn't going to be walking out like that and gathering all that information and so for them to be able to formulate this vision in their head of how the field is developing lets them make more informed decisions when they do get flushed and have to make those instant uh, plays maneuvers decisions like. Where am I running to? Um, because if you're letting your medic know, like, oh, we don't have big box, we don't have Baja, uh, then they're like, then they know, okay, I can't just dip around a corner when the heavy comes in because I'm going to get blasted. I need to probably flush all the way down. Right. Or if you let them know that you do have control of those spaces, then maybe they can just go around the cut around the corner real quick and be pretty covered. Um, if you get tagged ever as an ammo, relay that information, especially to your medic. Um, you know, going back to Loveland, if you get sh if you're in Fortress and you get shot from Red Base, uh, oh, there's somebody at Red Base now. Your medic knows. Okay, I can't peek out there. I can't if I flush there. I, I need to be making sure I'm getting low, and I need to be making sure that I'm trying not to get hit. Mm -hmm. And I keep that in mind. Um, just as much information as you can possibly provide to your medic. Let them make more informed decisions. Let them know what's happening in the field. Um, because it feels so bad when your medic is completely in the dark and they just flush straight into the enemy team. Oh, it does. Uh, yeah. And it's not even their fault. Like they're trying to go somewhere and they're kind of relying on instincts. And when they don't know where anybody is, they're just they're just going. But like we talked about in the medic video, the safest space is where you have teammates to help protect you um so just let me know where that is there's there's even times where the best way to flush is to where the enemy resupply is supposed to be because if your team kicks them down and their heavier commander is making like a last ditch counter push straight across to you mm -hmm. and they push into your resupply spot just go to the enemy resupply spot but if you but you have to pro provide that information you have to be, and this goes back to watching the field. You want to be watching that field. You want to be communicating. You want to be actively relaying that information to your medic. And that's kind of something that I love about the ammo rules. It's like so complex, but everything kind of ties together. Mm -hmm. Like you'll hear so many repeats between these tips. And it's because everything is important and everything ties together. And really, as long as you're keeping that ammo priority list in mind, the stay alive, then give shots, then watch the field, then support the field. Um, and, and you're playing smart, and you're playing, uh, like like you're you're keeping your mind on your lives. You're you're keeping your mind on giving your team shots when they need it. Um, and, and you're keeping yourself in check. Uh, you can do so much in the game. You can have such a large impact. Absolutely. Yeah, I think one of the most helpful things in this entire video has just been that priority list: stay alive, give shots, watch the field, support the field. Easy I, uh, way to break down the many aspects and uh, and modes that you enter when playing ammo. I uh, I'm going to thank uh, Thanatos for that. Oh really? Um, 
not Let's that I fan. didn't know to prioritize things. Um, but when I was, you know, head in the clouds, thinking super in depth about the ammo roll and everything that I could do. And I was talking with Dan. He said, don't forget to give your team shots. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you remember that that's what you got to do. And I was like, oh, yeah, th there definitely is a priority list to this. And, and um, I, I think it, I think one of the most important things is, is like I'll hear people talk about the game and I'll be like, I already knew that. But it's a different thing entirely to say the stuff out loud or have it said mm -hmm. out loud. Oh, yeah. Um, because obviously, yeah, giving your team shots is important. Obviously, staying alive is important. But like when you're in the game, you're like, oh, I could do all these things. It's so easy to get carried away with it. But but when you say it out loud or somebody says to you, like, giving your team shots, staying alive comes first. And giving your team shots is more important than whatever else you're trying to do. Like, it's like, oh, like that's now something I can actively think about. And, and so that's kind mm -hmm. of like I really wanted to put that in there just to give people a reminder, like, I trust that if you already knew that, fantastic, great. Um, but hopefully this is just a little extra reminder to keep that in mind next time you're trying to pop out to take some shots or you're trying to push up with your heavy. Um, keep your priority list in check. Very important. Make sure you're checking your boxes. Yeah. Aiden, I learn something new every time I do a podcast with you. Thanks for all you provide. <laughs> Is <laughs> what is one thing you want players to take away from this discussion? Uh, honestly, uh, it, it might be a little weird because it's not ammo specific, but but I think the biggest thing to take away from from our talk here is just to talk about the game. If you want to get better, talk about the game. It, it helps so much. It really does. Um, and there's a lot of players who are willing to talk. And, and if you try to talk to somebody and they are like standoffish or, or they don't want to talk to you, um, don't get discouraged, please. Um, there, there really are a lot of players who want to talk about the game. Oh, yeah. And, and I know some don't, but, but you'll find them. You'll find the players. And, and when you get them talking, oh, 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 golly, will they talk? Oh, man. I know there's some players that would rather keep their secrets to themselves, but man, yeah, people do love to talk about this game. And I think it's becoming, you, you know what I would say? I think, I think the cool people are the ones who are, who are sharing the information and having open discussions. You want to be part of the cool crowd? Talk about tag. Show us that you have some good stuff in your back pocket to, to talk about. I'm going to be real. My general assumption when people don't talk about it, it, it i assume that uh like they might be a good player but i assume that they don't know the game like like even if they are a good player my assumption is that they, they don't know why they're a good player if that makes sense <laughs> like uh maybe some people you know like like some people do good things but but i, I wonder like do they have a game plan or do they have like do they understand what they're contributing to the team or are they just going out there and shooting people and just have good intuition, you know? Right. And, and I really feel like that difference is so huge. Even if you're like, let's say, uh, let's say we're tiering players one through 10 with 10 being the highest. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're a six. You can be players who are eights, nines, tens. If, you know what you're doing and what you need to do and what your roles are and your team does as well. Like it's such an important thing. Like, like I've seen players who are, are really good. And I would argue that if you don't really know what, like if you aren't actively thinking about the game, I would argue that you can't be a 10, but you know, hypothetically, like there are players who are really good and maybe they just don't coordinate with their team and they don't communicate and they don't know what they need and they don't know what their team needs and they're just playing their own game. And it's such a bad way to play the game, at the, especially at the highest, highest level where you will just fall on your face over and over. Mm -hmm. Just talk about the game. All right. And the, that, that's a great thing to have people take away. Talk about the game. This is one of the best ways you become better in general. Um, and it's good for the community. We all can learn from each other's knowledge. The one thing I want players to take away from this discussion, between this discussion and the medic discussion, is that resupply is awesome. Which is not a popular thing to say, if I'm being honest. 
and and um, if you listen to my episode with Caleb, which will be out by the time I'm doing this as well, we talk about play styles, and I talk about how at the very beginning of my career, I did not respect players who played defense. I thought it was a role for people who weren't good enough to be on offense. That's an attitude that came from a 16-year-old me, and it's actually something I've seen from a lot of people. It's fair, you know? You get into the game, you want to go shoot people, and that's why you're playing, and why would you want to why would you want to sit around and give everyone shots so they can go fight? I get it. I just think those people are probably at a pretty early stage of their uh, laser tag development and maturity. But seeing how we talked for hour 45 plus about both medic and ammo and all the nitty gritty tactical juicy goodness that is involved in high levels of play don't disrespect resupply they take a lot of effort and the really good resupply is they they're not flashy on the scoreboard no one's coming out <laughs> we're not nothing in this video was saying that in order to be a great ammo you need to come out with a 5k score at the end of the game that's what a lot of in people order to be think is like what a good ammo is oh a good ammo yeah. they were able to resupply us and get a whole bunch of points for us that's not necessarily true yeah in order to uh, be a good ammo you have to kill out four enemy players on your own yep that makes Aiden uh, one of the only good uh, ammos <laughs> in the world <laughs> oh man um, I'm. Uh, it was such a good story but it was so it's so much of a gut punch to hear it every time because we um, wanted to we were so close to winning a match against you guys and then you and kodama yeah. just just 1v5 our team and our hopes are shattered because we didn't use teamwork and you did that's what it came down kodama's to. a a phenomenal player mm -hmm. and we had a lot of discussions Right, we talked a lot about the game and what the expectations were and, and how you play together and and having that level of mutual understanding helps so much, and that's why like communication is so important and why talking about the game is so important. You need to know why you're doing the things that you're doing, especially so that you can adapt mm -hmm. um, but yeah i i'm I'm sorry, Luke, because i I know how rough that is, and honestly i I, I wish that. You I, I wish to an extent that you guys beat us. Um, but also, uh, your sacrifice fueled one of my favorite laser tech stories of all time. So. Absolutely. You know what? Every, with every winner, there's a loser. And I don't wish that we... I wish we beat you, but I would only want that if we sincerely were skilled enough to do it. And your victory was a testament to your teamwork and skill. So I'm glad that's what won out, you know? Um... The play it was, was, that, was a good tournament. Yeah, oh, it was so good. There's so much more to talk about with all that. But I think we should wrap yeah. it up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have another podcast episode about, about tournaments. Of course. <laughs> May the conversations <laughs> always continue. Thanks for coming on, Odin's Fist. Yeah, it we'll was great. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode.